Hey there, my name's Taylor. Whether I'm traveling by air, land, or sea, I want to use my skills and various methods of travel to explore our beautiful planet. Subscribe to join me as I navigate life with my sense of adventure as my compass. In the last episode, Bobby joined to help out with some work, and we got to see Tara again to celebrate my new home. In this episode, we untie the lines and leave the dock for Sea Gypsy's maiden voyage. Well, in the name of boat work, and uh, it's getting down to crunch time, hoping that I can leave soon, it's time for me to change the oil on the engine. So I've got all the new oil. Um, I already started the engine and got it up to operating temperature and then shut it off. All the oil's warm and it should be easier for me to extract it. So let's do it. So while I'm waiting for all that oil to be extracted, I, I'm gonna be multitasking because I've got a couple different jobs I need to do. I managed to uh, get the old oil filter off, get the new oil in. I had to install like a, a, a mechanical oil pressure gauge because my oil light and buzzer that's supposed to come on in the cockpit when you turn the key on does not work and there is no sort of um, oil pressure gauge. There's nothing that tells me what the oil pressure is. So I managed to uh, install a mechanical one and so I'm calling it a day. Um, it's been good. The boat is still a disaster. Hopefully getting closer to be able to leave. I just got a message from Bobby. He's been he left Norfolk and was sailing down to Beaufort solo, which is like 36, 38 hours around Cape Hatteras. Last night went pretty well for him. He was okay. And then I just got a message from him tonight saying it's really rough out there, like 30 knots sustained the whole time. And, uh, and then I got another message from him saying that he thinks his transmission just blew. And it's dark, it's nighttime, the weather is not great. Sailing life, it's not always a vacation. It's its a lot of work and sometimes it's really scary and sometimes things happen. And um, it's kind of hard being the one sitting here. It's hard being the one sitting here when somebody that you really care about is in danger and he's all by himself. I'm sure he's probably gonna have to call the Coast Guard and he's gonna be okay, but he said he packed an emergency bag just in case and not sure if he's taking on water or if it's from a busted water line. Okay guys, uh, last night was a bit of a rough night. I was up pretty much all night trying to stay in contact with Bobby. He managed to get in contact with the Coast Guard. He got towed in around 4am. Basically his boat is, is pooched. It's gonna need a lot of work. All of his electronic systems, his transmission's toast. So uh, it's a pretty, it's a sad day. Um, I really feel for Bobby. It must have been really scary being out there by himself. And it's really sad because he has put so much time and effort and money into that boat. And um, that was my home for eight months. And it's really sad. If you're interested, you can go to sailingdoodles.com and watch the full episode on what happened to Bobby's boat that night. Good morning. It's about 7.30 a.m. I was up until like midnight last night. Just trying to get everything ready, cleaning up the boat, got groceries, put them all away. And I think today's the day. I think um, I'm gonna be leaving the dock for the first time today. And uh, we're leaving New Rochelle and heading all the way down the East River. And then we're probably just gonna stop in Brooklyn tonight. I'm, I'm hoping the engine runs good. I'm hoping we don't have any issues. 
I'm really excited to see see the city from the water because I really haven't yet and I think it'll just be an amazing view. I'm excited, I'm nervous, I'm scared. Kind of the culmination of the last couple of months is, is it's all coming together here. I mean, the whole boat buying process was a lot to do as just one person and then getting everything ready. I've been so, so glad to have um, some help from some really great people. Bobby's actually going to be flying here today to help out as things with his boat are, his season's kind of held up a little bit right now. So he's able to come and help me to, uh, to get out of New York and hopefully get to Annapolis where I'll be meeting up with quite a few other boats that will be um, heading south after Thanksgiving. And so I'll be able to buddy boat with a, a nice group of people which will make him feel a lot safer. Here it goes, guys. So first we've got to disconnect shore power and then we've got to head to the fuel dock and fill up on fuel and then we'll be ready to go. You ready, Taylor? No, I'm never gonna be ready. <laughs> All right, we're getting her off top. We're gonna walk her around the corner here and then she'll be going. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Good. Once we were underway, the initial nervousness of leaving the dock faded away into excitement. There's definitely still some more work left to do on Sea Gypsy, but it was essential for me to leave and head south as soon as I could, because the cold was already beginning to set in. I really love those first few moments of a sail, when you've just left the marina, heading into the unknown, looking back at the land drifting away behind you, and knowing that you're not going back there anytime soon. Okay, it's totally feeling real now. Cannot express how amazing this feels to finally leave the dock and this is the start of a whole new adventure. Look Ma, no hands. It's because I got an awesome autopilot, trying it out for the first time and it works great. to go under my first bridge. This is always nerve wracking, even though I know there's more than enough clearance. It's still a little scary. That was the first of many more bridges to come as we were leaving Long Island Sound, entering into the East River and heading straight for Hellgate. Hellgate is infamously known for being tricky to navigate due to its strong tidal currents of up to five knots. You must time the tide correctly so that you have the current going with you instead of against you. We've got a beautiful sunset, perfect conditions. We timed the current perfectly. So the maiden voyage is going very well. Nothing disastrous has happened yet. 
thank God. And yeah, I feel really good. With the current adding some extra boat speed, we flew through at almost nine knots. We approached our marina for the night in Brooklyn just as the sun was setting. It's been off a boat too long because they're feeling a little seasick. I was not seasick this whole time. It's really rolly. Like, I don't know if you can see what we're doing right now. We're rolling more than we did the whole trip down here. It's not that bad. It's a, little, it's a slightly surgy marina. It calms down at night because you got all the ferry traffic coming in That's here. That's what it is. It's the ferry. It's the ferry way. traffic, but at yeah. night it gets better. Okay, well, it was just because being down there sucks. Right. That, that sure, was it. Sure, sure. Oh. Thank you very much to my patrons for making this channel possible. If you're interested in becoming a patron, visit patreon.com slash taylor's travels. In the next episode, we're up for the sunrise to leave New York City for our first overnight sail to the CND Canal.